Speaking of portraits, what artworks do you think about? These are the most valuable paintings in the world, the treasures of various art museums. But the two artists I'm going to introduce also have an epical position in global art history with their portrait paintings. The paintings on the left are bloodlines, big family portrait series from the Chinese artist Zhang Xiaogang. Paintings in this bloodline series are predominantly monochronic. Stylized portraits of Chinese people, usually with large, dark pupil eyes, posed in a stiff manner, deliberately reminiscent of family portraits from the 1950s and 1960s. At that time, the whole family sat or stood together, looking at the camera collectively. The dress and expression were the same color and same style. I went to look at my grandparents' albums. I can find many similar photos. Zhang Xiaogang was born in Kunming in China Yunnan province in 1958. He graduated from Sichuan Fine Art Institute in 1982. He visited Germany in 1992, and this year he abandoned Expressionism and commenced rigorous interrogations on Chinese identity in a purely surrealist manner. Moving away from personal existentialist meditations towards investigations on national and collective history. During a visit to his parents' home in Kunming, leafing through old photographs, he experienced an epiphany. Photographs of his parents in their youth, of himself as a child, of him with his brothers and parents. All these made strong and lasting impressions on him, basing a new series of painting on these old photographs. John's bloodline works resonate with the uncannily unthrilling aura that combines the poignancy of old photographs with a disquiet surrealist style. By the usurping of photographic medium claims to objectively, John reopens a chapter from the past and elevens its discourse to painterly ambiguity. Different from other paintings of the artist, in the Bloodlines Big Family series, the picture is very clean, without complicated backgrounds. The character is modeling, and facial features seem to have been typified, or homogenized, and the facial features of the characters have been ignored. In order to highlight this consistency, the clothing has no traces of breath strokes, and its visual effect is closer to a photo making it smooth without any uneasy emotions. The spot is no longer like light, gradually becoming abstract and expressive. The thin red lines appearing on the screen represent the blood relationship of the Chinese. With one formula of beautiful face after another, each connected by exquisitely fragile crimson blood lines, John super ladder over encapsulates the artist's private familial memories. The collective psychological histories, dreams, and disillusions of an estranged generation, as well as his epical position in global art history. You must have seen this little girl holding a blade. She doesn't like to laugh. What do you look at? Leave me alone in the painting. The eyes are always slanted, and the face is written with rebellion. Yes, it is such an image, sometimes evil, sometimes innocent. This is a role from the famous contemporary Japanese artist Yoshitomo Nara. Yoshitomo Nara was born in Harasaki, Japan in 1959. He is a Japanese artist whose work have been exhibited around the world. He lives and works in Tokyo, and Japanese popular culture plays an influential role in his world. Nara studied at Aiki Prefectural University of Fine Arts and Music, where he received his BFA in 1985 and an MFA in 1987. He also studied in Kunstakademie Düsseldorf in Germany between 1988 and 1993. The work has several influences, including manga and anime of the 1960s, as seen in Nara's large eye figures. He challenges this characteristically cute images by juxtapositioning them with dark and frightening imagery. This infusion of horror changes the image altogether. The contrast of the innocent large-eyed child with the imagery of human evil may respond to Japan's strict 
social conventions. Other influences in Nara's work include punk rock music, Renaissance painting, Yukioi traditional woodblock prints, and graffiti. He also takes inspiration from the positive values of Japanese tradition and combines traditional with contemporary. The artist grew up in post World War II Japan, and the socio cultural environment certainly affected his mindset and artwork. During his childhood and youth, Japan was bereaved by Western pop culture. Nara was raised in the city of Aomori in Japanese countryside, fairly isolated. And as a child of two working class parents, he was often left alone while his parents were at work. This time alone, with imagination, played a significant role in his artistic development. Yoshitomo Nara's work expanded and improved mainly because he lived in Berlin for quite some time. He was isolated there, he didn't know any German, and he was seen as a foreigner. This disconnected him from the world, just how living in Aramori kept him away from the rest of Japan. It was a great thing because it allowed him to go on a journey of rediscovery and find new things about himself. He stayed in Germany for 12 years. When he went back to Japan, he pursued his career as a painter. He started to paint childhood portraits, and their facial features were inspired by Okama and Otafuku masks. Their poses were also from manga and anime cartoons. These were offering him a great way to fuse various elements from his past all while bringing in front a rather distinctive and very creative set of ideas. He often uses soft-hued pastel colors with bold lines as seen in anime characters in popular culture. The children featured in Nara's work sometimes wield weapons such as knives and saw. Their expressions are haunting, their eyes giving viewers costary looks with his use of contrasting images, colors, and emotions. Nara's work has captured the imagination of generations around the world. The subjects of his work, the wide-eyed and vulnerable children and animals, together with the nightmarish features of his paintings, can easily simulate distressing feelings. Nara's painting of young children became very popular. He managed to show a darker side of those kids, which smokes, had vampire fangs, and even used flaming torches. It was tough to actively figure out what that was all about. But it did show off that his creations can also go a bit darker if you want to do so. They did bring an aggressive posture mostly as a means to defend themselves. He said that he saw kids alongside bad people holding knives. And when he was asked why he had mostly girls in pictures, he said that he wants to have a neutral image. He doesn't want to make any gender distinction. He just wants to keep it neutral and showcase various emotions and sentiments, depending on the situation. Nara is one of the leading artists of Japan's influential neo-pop art and has become famous for his portrayals of children and animal. Although the children and animal he creates are adorable, they are often menacing, causing viewers to contemplate with the feelings and concepts behind his work. Underneath the popular appeal of the dark but adorable characters in his work are the somber social, political, and personal elements of his work. Darker emotions aloneness in a rigid society, rage, fear, and helplessness. When the two sets of painting are presented at the same time, Zhang Xiaogang uses expressionless images to express the commonality of times and emphasize the common memory of a generation. Yoshitomo Nara expresses the public's psychological response to the times by giving emotions to simple children. The two artists come from different Eastern countries. And under different time and space, 
they have condensed the faces of their era into a unified symbolic image. After careful study, the paintings have so many similarities. The simple visual portraits, as well as their unique insights into society and people, are like bystanders of the era, calmly dissecting the strata. In order to reveal the calm and indifference under the daily rich appearance. Do the paintings of these two artists give you a new understanding of portrait? It's like a charm of contemporary art. Likeness is not the main point. Painting is a mirror that reflects the artist's emotions and also reflects the viewer's sympathy and thinking. Hello everyone, I'm your little gardener, Grace. Welcome to my channel! Don't forget to subscribe! The exciting contents of the next video is waiting for you!